Right, today I'm trying a new setup for the teardown videos. Um, I've got a higher table. I'm a little further from the camera, but hopefully that won't matter. Should be able to boost the volume in post production. Uh, I have a video camera to disassemble. Um, what I have is all the tools I need. Hopefully. They will all be out of camera shot, but they will all be on the lower level of the table that you can't see, along with that other essential tool. Well, I am British. Yeah, the teardown subject for the day is this beast. It's a Panasonic WVP50E camcorder. It predates... Uh, no, it's not actually a camcorder, it's a camera. It predates camcorders. No further ado, the separate, sorry, the separate um, video camera or video recorder would have connected there. First trick, actually. Delicately remove the camera cable. Nice multi-core cable, I might have a use for that. Anyway, without further ado, start taking her apart. What they haven't got is a bucket for screws, but that's not a problem. Hopefully, should. Yep, one circuit board under there. There's actually a purpose to this teardown rather than just for the hell of it. That's where the autofocus electronics connects. This has a rather vicious looking ultrasonic autofocus. Works just as well as the later visual or infrared ones, but yeah, this has a purpose of this teardown. Hopefully should it not rain throughout the teardown video, which it might. I'm hoping they should have just unclipped, really, but you know me. I'm going to cut this because it's annoying me now. What we're going to do is try to salvage camera tube. This will have a camera tube. It's that old. And the viewfinder. Look at this electronics. Isn't that incredible? Screened plate. Discrete components. Not, not a piece of surface mount in sight. Uh, unfortunately my first trick is not going to work. What I was hoping was that I could use the miniature CRT from the viewfinder, which you can see in there. There's the little high voltage connection, isn't it cute? Quite often on these, they're a separate unit, but this one apparently is not. So it will just be a pure teardown. And of course the electronics will be kept. Connectors. Ribbon cables. More ribbon cables. More multipole connectors. A tiny, teeny delay line. Just remove these two screws. This should hinge the board free. Anyway, we shall see. Um, yep, apart from a few touchy little wires. There we go, one board from one side. Uh, yeah, there's a few diodes and things on there that can be used. I wouldn't trust the electrolytic capacitors after all this time, but the diodes won't have aged. Variable resistors are useful. 
do the same the other side here. Just find out where the uh, screws go in. Try and do it a bit more so you can see. I will try to remember to do this. This is the problem of facing the camera. It's facing the opposite way to me. But I can do a lot of it this way. There we go. This appears to be the signal board. Lots of analogs, probably audio actually. And the high voltage section, obviously. Um, it's unlikely that after all this time there's any charge on that miniature tube. Gonna take a risk. Yep, it was fine. And there's another board. It's probably a miniature flyback transformer under there. Might save that one for Ant as well, just so he's got a miniature tube to look at, or miniature transformer to look at. Looking on this board. Not too much of interest, a few more small variable resistors, a couple of diodes. About all that's any use. Alright, we're getting to the meat of it. I can see daylight through there. What I have to do now. Let's remove these screws at the back here. You can see the miniature screen from the viewfinder. Some LEDs. Right. Uh, there's a small screw there on the accessory shoe. Screw there. On the microphone mount. The microphone is missing. What we are going to try to do is fate will let us. Hmm. It will no longer hinge down. There we go. Remove the handle doesn't actually contain anything much at all. Um, removing a handle, as in a lot of my teardowns, is just pure viciousness. There's another, oh, there's a very long screw there, useful. We've got to the just take every screw you can see out the stage. I'm not showing you what I will do, but I will move around to the side here. Then hopefully it will be more visible on camera. And I'm actually a little closer to the camera microphone as well. As I say, this is an experimental new position for doing teardowns. A little bit less busy background. There's your... Uh, mini DIN plug for the VTR remote on its tiny little aluminium or aluminium bracket there's some rubbish uh, here's some mounting screws of some kind and some of these high voltage circuits were for the camera tube I'm not sure what type of camera tube, it might be a Vidicon, but don't quote me on that. It certainly predates CCDs or CMOS sensors. This is uh, early 80s vintage. There'll be none of your lead free solder crap in here. Like that one. See? 
there's two under there that I couldn't see. Hopefully the wind noise isn't too bad. Remove these screws. There we go. I don't know what that connector's for. Oh, it's for that for the actual microphone electrical connector. That's all that is. There's no way I can get the accessory shoe off. Not the usual one yet. So, right, what we have, we have removed the tiny CRT. Maybe. Not sure, actually. Um, there appears to be some more screws that I can't see. I think they're under this aluminium or aluminium plate. So what I'm going to do is cut one corner where I can see it so I can grab it and there are two. Nope, there's only one screw. But that's the bugger that was holding it. And there is the cutest little CRT you will ever see. Take off a clamping band. It's not the anti-implosion band, nobody panic. But there is your tiny, cute little CRT, about one inch screen, hideously long for its size. There's the high voltage anode connector, probably only about 2,000 volts on that. Uh, basically it's the same as a black and white TV tube, that's what it is, really. I mean, obviously the white here doesn't matter because it wasn't viewed in daylight, it was the viewfinder. So there was a rubber cup over that, so the actual whiteness of the screen didn't matter. They probably left off the coating. I think that's going to become a paperweight, actually, rather than being junked. There's some LEDs. This will go in my box of LEDs. Everybody has a box of LEDs, don't they? Right. Ooh. Lots of connectors. Right. There's the other LEDs. Just cut off the excessive lengths of wire. Thus. Now this here. I'm not sure what part of the circuit that was. Or is. white balance control there, but that's on a separate little board, completely. I imagine that would be useful to someone, a nice little pot with a handy knob. Might put that in my component box. What I'm going to do is uh, probably donate my, all the components and stuff. Yep, there's a couple of diodes on there. There's a load of electronics connector collectors. Connectors. There's a load of electronics collectors and experimenters who would be thankful for some of this. The screen stuff is a uh, Mitsubishi chip. There. Doing, you see it's getting smaller, the camera. That's what we're aiming for. A switch and another LED. Don't need the switch. Just cut the circuit board in half. Those slide switches are not very good when they're brand new, and that one certainly was not brand new. <laughs> and being the main power switch for the camcorder. It was probably quite worn. This is another little circuit board. There's one diode on it. Ooh! And a cooked capacitor. You can see, well, you may not be able to see the base of that capacitor there. It's all charred. 
very unusual. I'm not sure whether it, it may have been the capacitor. It may have gone high ESR. What I'm going to do though is keep these. This is the base for the tube, the miniature tube uh, here. Uh, where's the dud one? There. There's always one missing pin as a key. But yeah, I might actually be able to do something with that tube. It's a low enough voltage on there, 2,000 volts. I should be able to power it up from an electric fly swatter. Uh, give it a tap off of the lower voltage here. And we may be able to make something glow. Now here is the actual what I believe to be a Vidicon tube. And there's the base. Uh, now it's raining again. Marvel House. Alright, I'll just keep going. Unless it really chucks it down, then I will stop. But I don't think it's going to. Uh, there's more electronics on the base of this. If you think this is complex, you should see a modern camcorder inside. There we go. Lots of complex electronics in the base there. Haha, <laughs> complex electronics. Right, I'm just going to cut those to it. really is raining now. I'm hoping it's not going to... It's seriously raining. I may have to quit. I don't want to because I'm over halfway through. It's just a load of jacks. There's another remote control. None of that's worth keeping. None of that's worth keeping. What I'm trying to do is remove the cover plate there, I don't know. I'm trying to remove the camera tube itself. Not quite sure that's a... Oh, that's a wire to the camera tube. Must be it. Oh, that's probably the signal pickup, actually. If I remember how Vidicons work, the signal pickup is at the front, where the screen would be if it was a TV screen. So, in theory, famous last words, isn't it, usually? I think it wants to go that way. So what I may have to do, dispose of all this. Yes, by the way, they are going into water. figure out how to disassemble this another circuit board with two very old slide switches on I think I'm going to have to start attacking this from the other end now No, all I had to do was undo the lens mount. Idiot boy. Right, what you see here, so that this isn't just a teardown, it's a little bit of an explanation. There are filters here, the switch levers, selected indoor outdoor. The outdoor simply puts a yellow filter across. I'm not sure what this filter's for. I'm sure it's of interest to someone. Somebody will tell me. I would be interested to know, actually, what that other filter is. But now, if we take this off, which involves taking out all these tiny screws here, which I really can't be bothered with. So what I'm going to do is just cut those sensors out of the way. 
that one's already been cut. All I need to do is hoik these wires out of their clamping here. This is easier said than done, actually. You might have to... Hmm. Not sure how to go about this. So... Oh dear me, that does not want to come off of there. There we go. Right, we'll get rid of that now. Right, what we have here is the actual Vidicon tube itself. Ah. I believe I actually stripped the threads off of the screws that were causing the problem. I have there. Oh no, it's not a Vidicon, it's a Saticon. It even says so there. The Itachi Saticon. Made in Japan. Uh, I won't remove that. 8210. So that's 1982 October. Again, same kind of base. There's one pin missing as a key. Yep, this would have been the pick signal pickup. The Saticon. I'm not sure what this was or is. It doesn't look actually. No, it doesn't look to be original, to be part of the tube. I clip it back on there though because it uh, does, I suppose, serve a purpose. It protects the faceplate of the tube. I wouldn't advise taking these apart if they've been used recently, by the way, because you will get a healthy thump from them. They run on several thousand volts. I just kicked the tripod, didn't I? Uh, the autofocus unit and lens assembly, I think I will keep for another time. It's got telephoto wide angle. It may actually be usable. Although I cut the cord, of course. That doesn't matter, though. I, I suspect I will just be using the lens, probably as a macro lens for a camera. Hope, speaking of lens for camera, I hope there's no water on that lens. There probably is. But that, as we say, is that. Apart from this, which I will keep again for a later time. Put it in my pocket. No, I won't put it in my pocket, it's too big. Uh, and as usual with teardowns, once I dispose of all the useless plastic and metal, it's going into a plastic bucket by the way, all that's left are a few circuit boards. All this now could probably be done in one chip. Of course, it's not modern camcorders consist of more than one chip, except for the very basic ones. Um, if you buy a cheap, almost disposable digital camera that can do video, it probably pretty much is one chip. I've just noticed there's another capacitor here that's showing signs of burning around the edge there. I may take some still photos and shop them in to the video. Because I really haven't seen this before. No, I won't photoshop them in. Uh, too much like trouble. Too much hard work. I will just hold it up to the camera here and hope that it focuses reasonably well. And if necessary, if it didn't, I will put them at the end of the video. These are the two interesting pieces from this. The CRT from the viewfinder. Uh, it doesn't have Matsushita. Yes, 
and a Hitachi um, Satigon tube. Possibly worth something to someone, I don't know. But once again, thank you very much for watching my teardown video. Hopefully it was interesting at least. Um, even with a impromptu rainstorm in the middle. So once again, thank you very much. Uh, please rate, comment and subscribe.